Now let's look at setting and accessing properties of HTML elements. I'm going to start by adding a couple of tags to my HTML document just so that I have some examples to work with. So I have a div box, an unordered list. Let's add an image tag. And I'll go ahead and put IDs on all of these things so that I can pull them out easily. So call that an, an image. And it has a source. And let's just say images slash source dot PNG. And I'll get a broken image when I try to load that. So um, I'll, I'll fix that in a second. And uh, I'm also going to put an alt text here because we need that for the project this week. Not a very good alt text, but it's an alt text. And let's go ahead and uh, we have a, a link tag and a script tag, so that's good. Um, well, let me go ahead and put a paragraph of text in here too. So this is a paragraph of text. And I'll go ahead and also put an ID on here. A paragraph. Okay, so let's go ahead and reload. And uh, let me fix that image. So, um, how about the uh, kitten? Oh, he's so cute. Okay, so we'll go ahead and we'll save him. Save image as, and I'm in htdocs cis233w week four. I'll go ahead and right click and create a new folder called images. And uh, I'm gonna save this as kitty.jpg. And then back here, I'm going to change the source for the image to images slash kitty.jpg. OK, so now I have an image tag, which should work correctly. And I do. So there's my image tag. So uh, let me start by um, working through the top. So um, var link is document dot get elements by tag name link so there's my link tag and if I console dot dir that I see it's an HTML collection with one item so here's my one item in the HTML collection and it's a uh, HTML link element. And HTML link elements have a lot of properties on them. The ones I'm mainly going to be interested in are going to be link.rel. So uh, link sub zero. So I tried to take the rel property of an HTML collection. Here's the rel property of an HTML link element. So link rel is a style sheet, and link href is the URL of the style sheet. So in the DOM, the attributes that are exposed on an HTML element are going to depend on the type of HTML element. So another example is, let's say, script is document.getElements by tag name script and then this time I will take the first element because I know there's only one script there so scripts have sources if I try to do link dot source or link sub zero dot source I get undefined if I try to do script dot href undefined but link sub zero dot href is defined and script dot source is defined. Now I didn't set a uh, a type property so that's unset but if I go ahead and add an attribute for that type equal text slash JavaScript 
and save and reload. So here's my script tag again. Now I have source and I also have type. So just like you'd expect. Now the image tag I had before, let's say var image is document get element by ID image and image. So images have sources and this image has an alt text. And I haven't specified any other properties, but since this is on the page, image.width is 1000, image.height is 611. And if I right click and uh, inspect, and I have that image selected, you'll see from the hover text that it is in fact 1000 by 611. So some of these attributes I specified in the HTML and other attributes get filled in automatically by the browser when the page is loaded and displayed. Now I can also set some of these properties, um, but not set others. So for example, let me go ahead and get another kitty. So let's save this image as um, kitty2.jpg. And I know that images have source properties, so I can also set image.source equal images slash kitty2.jpg. And when I do that, the image changes. So let's set it back to the original. So that's going to work for the source of an image. That works as well. Now this works on image tags because images have a width property and they also have a height property. Well, let's look at the image first. So the aspect ratio is correct. And if I set the height, that changes the height. Now, if I reset the source, you'll notice that the width and height are sticky because now they're set as properties on the image tag. So let's look at the uh, results box. And we'll look at the results.width, it's undefined, and results.height, that's also undefined. So div boxes don't have widths and heights specified. They're calculated automatically by the browser. Um, image tags do have width and height attributes, so I can set or access them directly from the image tag. But wait, um, you may say, um, this uh, box is 400 pixels by 200 pixels. Um, you set that yourself. Um, where did that information go? Well, um, it didn't go directly on the results div box. Where it went was inside of the CSS file. And um, all tags, in addition to having attributes, there's one special attribute called style. So if I look at results.style. Here is actually a CSS style declaration object that itself has some properties. So it's got background and uh, lots of borders and uh, boxes and columns and all sorts of stuff. So basically a superset of all of the CSS properties that can be set. And if I look at the results.style.width, um, unfortunately, I still don't get what I want. So width and height are not available. So I can't read those properties, but I can set them. So results.style.width 
dot width equal 500 pixels. So you'll notice I have to put units here when I'm setting style properties. It can be pixels or M's or whatever. So you saw the size of the box changed, size of the box changed, and so on. So I can set these style properties. And now if I look at the style, now I get back the value I set it to. So when I initially load it, it sets the width to 400, but I can't access it. The reason is because I'm looking at a particular div box that has the ID results. That's different from this CSS style declaration, which says that all HTML elements with this particular selector are going to inherit that property. So this is saying that any results box that I create or any box with the ID results is going to get this value. Not that it's actually going to store 400 pixels as the style property for a new results box. That's maybe a little more obvious if you look at like this important item here. So on important item, I put a font weight bold. That means any important item I create is going to inherit font weight bold. But any particular item I create is going to have a class name, important item. It's not necessarily going to have any CSS properties on it. So by default, I get basically just a generic HTML item. So var new item is equal to document create element and let's say we'll make this an li so if i look at new item dot style these are the default properties that any li is going to get when i create any li and most of them are empty as you see now if i go ahead and attach a class to that li like so li dot class name is important item. Oops, what did I call that? A uh, new item. So new item now has a class, but that doesn't change any of these style properties. I just changed the class. I didn't change any style properties. like so. So even though it inherits, or we would say cascades the style down to this particular item, that doesn't mean that the properties are set directly on this item. So I'm going to go ahead and add it to this list here. Document get elements by tag name ul sub zero dot append child new item so that adds a new item to the list but still new item dot style dot font weight still nothing now let's go ahead and put some text in there new item dot inner text equals sixth you'll see that it's bold. So even though there's no font weight property on the style declaration for this particular item, it's inherited bold from right here, results. Actually, let me go in the list. Here's the item I just added. It inherits it from this dot important item style declaration. Now I can change that. So if I say new item dot style dot font weight equal normal, now I've lost the bold off of this item. So instead of inheriting bold from the CSS style sheet, instead there's now a property 
directly on that object with the value that I've set there. So what if you want to know um, the actual properties, the style properties for an item that you've just created or added, even if those style properties aren't directly on the HTML element? So once again, um, var another item equals document.create element li another item dot inner text is seventh another item dot class name is important item and then let's get that ul and add our another item to it. So there's our seventh item. So another item dot style dot font weight is unset. So the way I get it, the way I cascade all of those properties from the style sheets down to the item is to look at the computed properties. So Let's go ahead and go back here to elements and click here. Now you'll notice that I'm looking at styles. So this is actually a style that's defined on dom.css line 11. Here's another one from dom.css on line seven. Nothing that uh, is defined here is actually gonna show up on my HTML element. But this tab here computed, this includes all of the properties that get cascaded down from the style sheet and also properties that are assigned by the browser when the HTML is laid out. And if you look here, I'm going to look for font weight in this list. So font, use font weight, bold, and you'll notice it's highlighted because it's overridden from the default. So the computed style includes bold because it's been cascaded down it also includes the fact that it's displaying as a list item and that it has a color associated with it. All of that stuff. In addition, it's going to have um, some width and height properties. So height is 18 pixels and width, T-U-V-W, width is 869 pixels. These are calculated and uh, set by the browser when this element is formatted and displayed on the page. So the computed style properties have all of the things that are actually affecting this tag. The style attribute is only going to have the stuff that's explicitly set on this one particular object. So how do you actually access these computed properties? Well, that's a little weird, but basically the document has a, uh, has a property called default view. And then the default view itself has a bunch of methods. So it's actually a default view is a window, the window that's currently displaying the document. And one of those methods is get computed style. So we're going to call, oops, so let me go back to here. So we're going to call document.defaultView.getComputedStyle. And then we pass it the node that we want to get the computed style for. So we don't actually want to know the computed style for the window. We want to know the computed style for a particular node in the document that's being displayed in the window. So document, actually, let me just use another item. So that gives me all of the computed properties, all the computed style properties for another item, both the things that are set directly in style and also the ones that are cascaded down from the style sheet. So um, knowing where to look for a particular property does take a little bit of practice, um, but uh, generally speaking, 
once again, if it's set directly on an object, if you're making an object and you're setting a property on it, it'll be there. So let's go back to my HTML. And this time on this list item, let's say the third list item, I'm going to put a style property. Let's say for this one, I want my color to be purple. And now I'm going to reload. The third one is purple. Now if I, let's get the path to that. So here's the third one. I'm going to right click, copy the selector. And then I'm going to go to the console. I'm going to say var third is document dot query selector. And then I'm going to paste in the selector. So now third is the third item with the color property. Now if I say third dot style dot color, I get purple. I get purple because it's set directly on the object instead of being set on a selector in the style sheet. But now if I look at uh, document dot uh, default view get computed style third dot color I get an RGB value which is actually the RGB value for purple. So this is full red or half red, um, zero green and half blue. That's this purple that I have here. And I can go back and forth. So this computed style, this is basically read only. If I try to set this to, let's say cyan, that has no effect. I can't set the value of a computed style. It's computed by the browser. But what I can do is I can set third.style.color equal to cyan and then I can get the computed style for third. So now cyan is full green and full blue with zero red. So I can read or set properties under style. Um, I can only read computed styles and the property on the style is only going to be set if it's set directly on the tag, either in the HTML or by setting a DOM property.